Hi, everyone. I'm Cheryl Butler, and you're listening to the Mighty Mommy's Quick and Dirty Tips podcast, which will help make your life as a parent a little bit easier and a lot more fun. Welcome. Today's episode is number 615, 20 Grocery Shopping Tips to Save Your Family Big Bucks Because Groceries Make Up a Huge Chunk of Your Family Budget. And I am super passionate about sharing these strategies and smart tips because you can drastically cut your food bill and enjoy hearty savings along with delicious meals. If you feel like grocery shopping has become more expensive, you're not imagining things. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, food prices rose 2.6% in 2020. That's the biggest increase in nearly 50 years. Whether the pandemic is the reason you're spending more on food or you've just never taken the time to figure out a money-saving strategy for your grocery bill, now is the perfect time to turn that around. These smart grocery bill hacks will save you time and help you keep your hard-earned bucks in your wallet without the hassle of clipping coupons. First, you need to have a plan to save money on your groceries. Number one, Don't wing it. Plan it. Hands down, the easiest way to save thousands of dollars each year on your grocery budget is to get on board with meal planning. No matter the size of your family, when you take time to plan your meals, you'll always be ahead of the grocery game. Having a plan and a shopping list to match will not only save time, but you'll be less inclined to buy things you don't need. And as a bonus, you won't have to waste gas on extra trips because you forgot to pick up a key ingredient. Number two, get a meal planning app. A free meal planning app will eliminate the guesswork. Two of my favorites are Spoonacular, which syncs with your Google Calendar, and Yumly, where you can search for recipes based on meal course, such as your entree or side dish. And it will counter in your prep time or try a fun new menu trend. Number three, keep your pantry stocked. You don't need to have tons of extra space in your home to have a well-stocked pantry. You know what your family loves to eat, so make sure you always have the basic ingredients like pasta, rice, seasoning mixes, sauces, and more on hand. If you always have the basics to whip a meal up together, you'll be less likely to opt for pricey takeout. So, before you make that weekly grocery list, shop your shelves first. What do you have that you could use in your meal plan this week? What's running low? A quick tip for you. Supercook is a time-saving app for doing a little planning based on what's already in your pantry. Enter the ingredients you have on hand, and it suggests dozens of yummy, cost-saving meals that you can whip up in no time. Number four. Stock up during sales. Take advantage of sales to stock up. My rule of thumb for sale items is buy one to use now and two for later. Just make sure you're buying versatile, family-tested items that you know you're going to use. Impulse items might end up abandoned on a pantry shelf long past their expiration date. Now, try some of these produce hacks that I have for you. Number five, shop seasonal. My grandmother taught me early, take advantage of seasonal produce. Whether it was berry picking season or time for autumnal root veggies, nature always provided a palette of seasonal goodness. As tempting as it is to buy juicy strawberries in January, you'll likely pay more for out-of-season produce. So pay attention to Mother Nature's timetable. And six, weigh your produce. Grocery stores have scales for a reason. And I cannot tell you how many times I thought I could eyeball a bunch of cherries or a few heads of broccoli, only to find out that I bought way more than I needed. Number seven, grab from the back. Your friendly grocer stocks the oldest products at the front of the shelves so they'll get purchased before they expire. If you're using that produce in a meal soon, well, go ahead and grab from the front. But if you'll need to store your produce for a while, reach in and grab from the back to get something fresher that will last longer in your fridge or pantry. 
Number eight, buy reduced. Of course, fresh produce is great, but don't be afraid to buy from the reduced section in your favorite store. Bell peppers, tomatoes, bananas. There's always something that needs to be used immediately. If you're going to use bell peppers in tonight's recipe, go ahead and get the ones that are marked down for a quick sale. They'll still be fresh and tasty, but you're going to save so much money. You'll also make sure that produce doesn't end up wasted when your grocer has to discard it. Number nine, one of my favorites, nix the pre-cut produce. As tempting and time-saving as the pre-cut straw carrots or apple wedges are, you're probably paying way too much for the convenience. Buy the whole fruit or veggie and take a few minutes to prep yourself. And a quick tip for you: your older kids they make excellent sous chefs. Teach them to use a knife safely so they can chop veggies and fruits. Then they'll learn valuable life skills that will help them out in the kitchen. Check out the video that I have linked on my page at www.quickanddirtytips.com/mighty-mommy for a review of knife skills. Next, take advantage of your freezer. So, number ten, stock up on freezing supplies. Freezing meals, leftovers, and fresh produce reduces waste and saves you so much time and money. So, keep the necessary supplies on hand. You'll need sealable storage containers and bags, and a bonus if they're reusable, because you'll be both frugal and eco-friendly. And have masking tape and markers on hand to date and label your items, so you won't have mystery contents taking up valuable space. I keep a simple freezer inventory sheet on a magnet on my freezer, where I note the date and the item that was frozen, and then I just scratch it off when I take it out of the freezer, so I'll know that it's gone. Number eleven, learn what you can freeze. Some surprising items that freeze beautifully: whole avocados, breadcrumbs and canisters or bags, dairy products such as cream cheese, sour cream, yogurt, shredded and sliced cheese, even pancake mix, nuts, chocolate chips, which my family loves, hummus, or even pre-made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Soups and sauces freeze well in mason jars. Just be sure to leave one or two inches at the top of the jar for expansion. And buy chicken breasts and other meats in bulk when they're on sale, and slice and bag them individually in a marinade or just plain. You know what? Even cake mixes and containers of frosting freeze well. Number twelve: Cook and freeze family favorites in batches. Batch cooking means making a double batch of a favorite recipe. You serve one batch and you freeze the other. This technique requires planning and some extra work up front, but the reward is so worth it because you're going to have a variety of your family's go-to recipes available in a pinch. Betty Crocker has a helpful article full of great tips. It's called Thirty Day Batch Cooking. I learned about batch cooking during my early pregnancies. The time and energy, and indeed the money I saved by employing this technique, was priceless. And head over to my page and check out the link to one of my must-have kitchen helpers, the Food Saver Vacuum Sealer. It's definitely one of the best investments I have ever made, and I know I couldn't live without it now. And rounding up. My tips is I want you to try and incorporate these nifty cost-saving quick tips. Number thirteen, don't be afraid to try generic brands. Many of these they come from the companies you already love. Number fourteen, embrace yellow sticker items, especially meat. These are items reduced for a quick sale. They're still safe to eat, of course, or you can add them to your freezer stockpile. Fifteen. Download your store apps. You're going to be able to take advantage of digital coupons or sales that you didn't even know that were in your flyer. Number sixteen, shop in the middle of the week. This is when most stores offer their weekly deals. Number seventeen, consider ordering groceries online. You'll be able to see your order tally right before your eyes, and you won't be as likely to make impulse purchases. 
I do one online grocery shopping per month, and that does save me a lot of time and money. Number 18, download the Fetch Rewards app. This is like putting free money in your pocket every time you shop. Simply scan your receipts each time you shop, and you'll earn rewards and bonuses that you can cash in for gift cards at Amazon and your other favorite online shopping sites. Number 19, shop with cash, not a debit card. Several years ago, I switched to shopping with cash. And you know what? I have now set a budget that helps me stick to my grocery list, and I use that cash to make it work. And speaking of grocery lists, number 20, never shop without a grocery list. You'll buy stuff you don't need and forget stuff you do. Pinterest has lots of free templates to get you started. And a little quick tip for you. Don't forget about the local dollar store. It's useful for more than just party supplies. Most stores have staples like condiments and spices, but also grocery items like bread and beverages. How do you save money on your family's food bill? Join the conversation and share your thoughts on the Mighty Mommy Facebook page or Twitter. You can also email me at mommy at quickanddirtytips.com. Listen and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Next week, I'll be addressing something that most families can relate to, bedtime battles. Bedtime can be one of the most stressful parts of parenting. At the end of a long day, when kids are overtired and parents are exhausted, it's crucial to get your little ones to bed without a hassle. Many times, though, that's easier said than done. However, I'll share some smart tips that will help everyone rest a lot easier. Thanks so much for listening, and until next time, happy parenting. Happy parenting.